Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. My Auburn Tigers just started playing. They're playing Ole Miss today, and I'm not expecting much. In fact, I believe if they lose today, I believe Auburn may fire Gus Malzahn, their head coach. So I'm sitting here about to watch this, but I decided I would go ahead and send you out this video um, because I, there was a couple of interesting things that I wanted to go over. The first is... Um, a guy on Twitter um, last yesterday, I believe, sent me this, Todd Freeman. I wanted to give him credit for sending me this article and tell him I appreciate it. He is at high rise under slash 360. So he's in the XRP community. If you uh, want to go follow him, if he's putting this out, he's probably putting other good things out. Um, he put this article, sent me this article on Twitter. Uh, this is from the Daily Hodel. Um, crypto insiders react to launch of Fidelity assets and mainstream boost for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Before I read to you a couple of quotes from this, I wanted to address something that I've seen a lot of uh, questions that people ask in my comments and different things. Every time <laughs> I've learned that every time that I give a good piece of news that's good for crypto in general, if it does not mention specifically, like in Fidelity's case, if they don't mention specifically that the second that they open their doors that they're going to list XRP, everybody's like, yeah, but this is not good for XRP because they're not listing XRP. That means absolutely nothing. What we're talking about is a juggernaut that's, that uh, is a new asset class, and this is not going to all happen overnight. But the fact that, d uh, that traditional um, investment firms are opening up digital asset platforms, like I've told you a thousand times, it's just a matter of time. Just like I tell you all the time, it's just a matter of time before XRP becomes the predominant asset. R right now you have Bitcoin that holds the, the higher percentage in most of these ETFs and different things that are being created or talked about. Um, but that won't be the case in the long term. And why? You already know why. Because XRP is the greatest digital asset ever created. And you can watch many of my videos and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Um, okay, so back to this article. What this article is, is they went and, and asked, um, and I love, I love reading things like this to you because um, you can, people can, can say all the time, this guy or that guy, um, he says this, but he doesn't know what he's talking about. That's why I love to give you quotes of people who are actually in either traditional finance or in the uh, blockchain industry. And let's hear what they have to say, because I like for people who I like people who are smarter than I am. And I like for people that are in places higher than I am to validate what I'm saying. And that's the reason that I read these things to you is because I can say all this stuff and you can point at me and say, oh, well, that's wrong, that's wrong, that's wrong. That's easy for someone to do. But, but I reinforce my arguments with what other people are saying who are in much higher positions than you or I. <laughs> and I do it because that it helps to validate most of my arguments. And so here we go. This is from this article, Fidelity Digital Assets, Mainstream Boost for Bitcoin and Ethereum. The first guy that they quoted in this article was uh, Bruce Elliott, president of ICOX Innovations. He says, Fidelity's entry marks a huge step forward for mainstream adoption of cryptocurrency. For many reasons, seasoned investors have either been shut out of crypto markets or have been slow to invest up until now. This is a signal that financial markets and regulators are gaining clarity and comfort on the outlook for trading and comfort on the outlook for trading cryptocurrencies. Um, then, then they quoted Akbar Thabani, I believe is how you say that, CEO of S Fox. Um, Fidelity digital assets focus on cryptocurrency custody and trading services for enterprise clients showcases the commitment and interest they're seeing from their clients. But we'll really hit a turning point 
when Fidelity offers cryptocurrency to their retail and 401k customers. I think that you know I've talked about 401k. This is where all of this eventually ends up. Not just 401ks, but in traditional accounts as well. Now, um, Andy Bromberg is quoted, co-founder and president of CoinList. Every announcement is a vote of confidence in the future viability of digital assets. We expect these moves to further increase the confidence of regulators and help drive the law forward. And finally, my favorite quote of all of these. This is Rahul Sood, CEO of Unicorn, which is a e sports betting um, platform that issued their own token. Um, he says, crypto is going to break the status quo in fintech including securities. Fidelity will not be alone. Soon, asset managers will look at blockchain the way bank, the way banking looks at the internet. Do or die. And that is exactly, I'm going to put that in the title of this video. Um, and, and that is, um, that's a great title. I'm typing this right now because I, I, I see that and that's perfect for a title. Um, anyway, moving along. Now, I told you the other day about Genesis um, Global Trading. This is a uh, institutional trading platform over the counter. It's owned by the Digital Currency Group. Well, the other day, um, Genesis Trading CEO Michael Morrow, um, it's, I don't know if it's called, it says Genesis Trading is what it's, Global Trading is what it's called, but here it says Genesis Capital. Okay, so either one. Um, Michael Morrow is the CEO, and he was on CNBC talking about the crypto market and the trends that he's seeing. Well, C3 Nick, who you should all follow, as I tell you all the time, I, I find he, he keeps putting up great stuff, and I'll keep covering it. And that goes for anyone. If you put up great content on Twitter and I see it, or you make me aware of it, I will cover it because uh, everybody has something to add to this community, and, and I'm open-minded to, to what everyone has to say. And so, um, at C3 under slash Nick, if you want to go follow him. Okay, so C3 Nick summarized um, what uh, some of the, he took some of the charts and put them in a, in a good summary format. Um, if you want to actually go watch the video, you go to, go to his feed here, and he's got a link to this YouTube video that I just showed you. But, but he, what he summarizes here, and, and these charts show... First of all, let me establish kind of what the Genesis trading guy was talking about. He said that they lend out digital assets. And he said one third of the digital assets that they loan out are used for shorting and two thirds for other things. Okay. And so what, what these charts you're about to see are, you're going to see that there is a trend that has gone in the direction of XRP. And what's more interesting even than that, and we'll go through all of his information here that C3 Nick has. But what's more interesting, inter what's more important and fascinating to me is this guy said that as we've moved along this year, that we've as Bitcoin has gotten closer to about where it is now, he is starting to see the shorts abandon that side of the trade and go long. And as that's been happening, as you'll see here a higher percentage of, of the digital assets they're loaning is going in the direction of XRP. So as the market is going heading in the long direction, the more and more investors are going towards XRP. That is the way I heard his video. And so let's go through this information. XRP accounts for 17.8%, whereas Ethereum accounts for 37 Now this is the, this is the chart of, of how things are represented now. Look, 62.6% in Bitcoin, 17.8% Ripple, um, and Ethereum's down here at 3.7%. This is in September, okay? And then as you scroll down, as a comparison, this is the data from March. 50% Bitcoin, 42% Ethereum, 8%. Now remember, and go watch the video, I encourage you to watch the video because he literally said, that one third, one third of their loans are, are loans of, of their digital asset loans. One third is used for short, two thirds for things not related to short. And he said that as we've gotten closer to where Bitcoin is now, the shorts are starting to abandon Bitcoin and going long. Okay. And so as that's happening, we're trying, there's a move towards XRP in their lending. That, Sounds good to me. Okay, 
This is the raw data question is how do we interpret it? It is important to note that the lending can also be used as a short asset and is not only for going long. That's what kind of what I was just, just talking about. The data shows, however, there's a considerable interest in XRP. So look at this. This is March of 2018 and then June and now September. Bitcoin has gone up. Okay. And look at, look at these others. Look how Ethereum, this is amazing that, that Ethereum's gone down. Um, and look, look where XRP has gone. Unbelievable. Now that I find hard to believe how on earth could there, unless they weren't, I, I have to assume that they didn't have, they weren't lending XRP back then for it to be zero. I have to assume that because that is, that's insane. But how, what, what have I told you over and over and over and over and over what I have said is that when I first got into Bitcoin, I went through the same process that you probably went through and what eventually the institutions, then the average Joe of investors are, uh, eventually will go through. And that process is you buy Bitcoin and then you sit there and you're like, well, if there's Bitcoin, there's got to be these others that I haven't heard of. And you do your research, do your research, and you eventually end up at the greatest digital asset that's ever been created, which is XRP, which is better than any of them in, in, in all categories. That's just the way it works. And that's what this says to me. And that's what it should say to you. Um, now, I didn't, uh, you should also go through, I didn't go through all of these in detail, but they kind of summarize the trends for Q3. Um, and they, they summarize kind of what's been going on in here as well. You can read that. Um, well, uh, also, there's only, there's only two more days left for that 20% off. To get a Ledger Nano S, you can still, that'll be in the description of all my videos. Go get your Ledger Nano S. They're normally a hundred bucks. Now they're like 79 bucks for the next two days. So it's in the description of all my videos. I'm a digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe, hit the like button, tell your friends and family to come listen to the digital asset investor. Thank you so much.